I'm George Wingard with Blue Diamond Pumps here in Swanee, Georgia today at the Mitsubishi Training Center, and we're gonna be installing a Maxi Blue on a Mitsubishi P-Series high wall unit. We're gonna be installing our X87721 and our C13192 on this Mitsubishi P-Series. Let's get started. What we'll need to complete the installation other than what's in the pump box is gonna be quarter inch ID tubing. We recommend reinforced wire nuts, basic uh, install tools, wire cutters, and a Phillips head screwdriver. We can get started on the installation. Getting started with the plumbing on the pump, we're gonna first install the reservoir. What you'll find inside the reservoir bag is a coupling. This half inch ID coupling will adapt your Mitsubishi drain tube to the inlet of my reservoir. Black two caps on the reservoir, you'll move those to the inlet and outlet that you're not using. For this particular application, we're gonna be going in and out the side, so we'll move the blanking plugs to the top. Adapting from the drain tube to the reservoir, very easy. With this half inch ID coupling, onto the drain tube, onto the reservoir. Please note, for different installs, you can trim this if we need it to be shorter, um, if you have a different piece of tubing you wanted to use. Um, as long as we can get this transition water into the reservoir, watertight seal, that'll be adequate. Um, once you have the reservoir adapted to the drain tube, of course, you know, on a final install, we want to make sure that our connections are secured. For right now, we're going to leave it like this. Next step will be to take a piece of quarter inch ID tubing and adapt the outlet of the drain tube to the inlet of the pump. Now, you may not be able to see it in the video, but there are arrows that indicate the suction and the discharge on the pump. We want to go in the, um, the fitting that's on the blue faceplate. Now, for this particular video, I'm going to set the pump right here. Keep in mind, this pump creates 16 feet of suction, so you can actually mount this pump anywhere within 16 feet. Out of the box, you've got six and a half feet of cable extension. So out of the box, with no additional accessories, you can actually mount the pump six and a half feet away from the reservoir. And this will just plug right into the back of the pump for communication in between the reservoir and pump. For this particular video, like I said, I'm gonna leave the pump right here, because as you can tell, there's no other place to mount it. Once you have the reservoir installed, um, you can use a piece of double-sided tape to fix this down. There's also anchors and screws provided with the reservoir, depending on how, what route you wanna go. Once you have the pump in place um, and the reservoir installed, what we'll do next is we'll move to install the electrical connections. Before we move on to the electrical connections, what we need to do is make sure that our vent line is run also. This came in the bag with the reservoir, and it's the only hole that's still open on the top once you put your blanking plugs up here. So what we'll do is we'll connect one end of the tubing to the vent on the reservoir, and then you just snake your tubing up so the other end is higher than the drain pan. I'm gonna leave it up here for now, um, but you could cut it you know, at a certain point, whatever you feel is best. Um, you know, to get it up higher than the level of the drain pan, but to keep it unobstructed. Once you've got your vent run, the next step is gonna be running the electrical. You'll notice I have the pump set right here. Uh, most applications, your pump is gonna be mounted remotely. This pump is uh, positive displacement and it creates 16 and a half feet of suction. So you can literally mount it anywhere within 16 and a half feet of the reservoir and you can mount it in any orientation. As we discussed earlier, out of the box, this cable is only six and a half feet long. So without buying any additional extensions, you'll have six and a half feet out of the box where you can mount the pump away from the reservoir. And again, with the pump being positive displacement, you can mount it in any orientation and it does not require a check valve. For this particular install, of course, because it's a mock-up, I don't have anywhere to mount the pump itself, so I'm gonna leave it right here. Um, let's say for this particular install, the pump has been plumbed. The next step is running these electrical wires. And I'm just gonna take them back here across the unit. It's really gonna depend on how your, where your pump is installed and where you actually route your wires. Um, for this particular install, we'll just run them right across. 
back out the conduit and um, up front to the electrical connections. And then we'll turn the unit around and show you how we install it from there. All right, guys, so we've got this electrical cover off, which has exposed our S1, S2, and S3. On the P-Series, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna power the pump using our black and white wires, which in the book we indicate as L1, L2, and of course, ground. We're gonna install L1, the black wire, on S1, L2, the white wire, on S2, and then of course, green will go on this ground back here. And that's how we're gonna power the pump. Now we've got the pump powered, as you can see, as we described before, from the pump, our black wire, which is RL1, is installed on your S1 with your S1 wire from your condenser. Our white wire, which we call it RL2, is installed on the S2 of the P-Series unit, along with your S2 from your condenser. Lastly, the ground wire is grounded up here to the ground terminal. Next, we're gonna to move to installing the normally closed set of contacts from our pump onto the CN4F uh, circuit on the control board. First, gotta remove this screw. Once that screw is out, it'll allow you to remove this panel and expose the control panel of the P-Series unit. CN4F is actually a little plug, just like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this jumper wire and very simply break it with our normally closed set of contacts. So we'll put black, which is common to one side, yellow, which is closed to the other side. This, of course, is in a normally closed state as the pump operates. If for some reason it reaches high level, it'll open that normally closed contact, which will break the CN4F sensor, sensor and send the proper error code to the, um, to the communication system. To make this particular connection, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these spade terminals on the pump. So with that connection made, that plugs right back into CN4F. And now you've got your alarm contacts installed. What we wanna do is you'll notice that there is a normally open set of contacts on the um, pump wire, it's a red wire. I've clipped it on this end, and what we'll do on the other end, coming off of the pump, is we'll install this wire nut. And that's just because there will be um, power uh, coming through there because it's a normally closed contact, although you're not putting voltage through it. Just for safety purposes, I'd go ahead and cap it off. Now that the electrical connections are made, what we'll do is we will go ahead and we'll put the cover back on the unit, we'll button everything up, uh, we'll make sure that we have the proper um, clamps and uh, all of our hose connections are properly secured, air and water tight, um, and then we'll test the pump. So once we've made the electrical connections, we've got everything ran. Basically the last thing to do before testing the pump, um, with the Maxi Blue, although you've got it powered and you've got voltage to it, even if you hit the breaker and turn the voltage on as is, the pump's not gonna respond until you plug in the reservoir. So this flat side goes up, there's also an arrow on here, and this will plug in right to the back side of the pump. Eight pin coated plug, you can only put it in one way. Once you plug it in, if you've got power to it, to it, the unit will come on initially, it'll cycle one time through a calibration process, heats the thermistor inside the reservoir and it's ready for water and to start pumping. Um, lastly, let's just make sure that when we are installing these, that we are securing all of our connections with the proper hose clamps or the wire ties that we provide with the pump. Uh, last but not least, we'll go ahead and button everything back up and we'll show you a finished product. I'm Jordan Wingard, and that was the install of a Maxi Blue on a Mitsubishi P-Series high wall unit.